we'll call a meeting to order here. Um, so first of all, thanks everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, I will uh, just speak very briefly here and then I'm going to pass, pass it over to uh, Coach Eigner. Uh, first of all, my name is Brad Connick. I'm the North Association Head Coach. Uh, what that means is basically my role within the association is um, throughout the summer and then heading into tryouts, I help to identify potential coaches and then as the tryout process finishes up, uh, I select coaches um, with the help of Trent and other uh, Hockey Development Committee members. Throughout the season, I work with the coaches um, as far as helping them uh, with their practice plans, uh, mentoring uh, coaches as needed, and then I'm also a liaison for the parents. Um, certainly, you know, the first thing that we would ask is that a parent communicate directly with their coach. But if there's any type of a breakdown of communication, or if a parent is simply just not comfortable in approaching the coach for whatever reason, then that's a time when it should come to me, where they would contact me to say, I have a question or a concern regarding our coach or an incident that's happened. At that time, uh, basically, we, we figure out a, a course of action. And at times, it's involved uh, calling Trent in, um, having the appropriate meetings, or uh, approaching the coach and having discussions as far as some of the questions and concerns. Um, so we're, we're, uh, I'm here both to work uh, with the coaches and with the parents um, to try to make you know things as, as uh, smooth and, and uh, enjoyable as, as we can throughout the season. Uh, inevitably there are some issues that come up, but one of the biggest, I'd say the biggest uh, things that, that uh, happens though is that parents actually don't come to me with questions or concerns uh, they, you know, they keep it to themselves and they, they wait till the end of the year and then, you know, uh, issues come out as far as things that they were unhappy about. And at that point, aside from maybe affecting selections for the next year, it's too, it's, it's kind of too late. So I, I highly recommend that if you do have questions, concerns that you're, you're not comfortable in, in talking with your coach uh, for next year about, definitely uh, contact me and get involved. Um, also then, I'm the liaison between Trent uh, and the high school program and the youth coaches. And the idea there is basically uh, to try to get uh, everyone on the same page as far as what we're trying to do from a development perspective, um, from a, a philosophy perspective on how we approach the game. Um, so as Trent uh, comes to me, uh, he basically will say, you know, Brad, uh, I'd like to have a coaches meeting. And, I'll facilitate getting that set up with the coaches. So we have those on a month to month basis uh, throughout the year. Uh, at the end of this year, we, uh, we're meeting with some of the coaches and getting feedback and in uh, talking with Trent, he decided that he'd like to have uh, sort of a, a pre-summer meeting and get every, everyone off on the right foot heading in, into what technically is the off season of hockey. So um, uh, my contact information is up here. Um, the other thing and the last thing I'll talk about real quickly is just as the, the summer progresses, as anyone uh, becomes interested or intrigued with uh, coaching, I would highly recommend that they reach out to me directly. There's a formal process through the website as far as filling out an application, but it's still better to just contact me directly and, and let me know your intent and, and interest in coaching. Um, every year we run into challenges trying to find head coaches. Um, as much as I would love to say that we have the best coach at every single level in every single spot, the fact of the matter is it's not the case, and admittedly so for some of the coaches. Um, the way the process works is that as tryouts finish up, we're going to end up with teams, um, particularly at the B and C level, that, have, uh, that do not have assigned coaches heading into tryouts. So now we're down to basically a group of 15 kids and their parents to try to formulate a coaching staff from. And in many cases you have parents who <clears throat> they're not raising their hand to say, you know, I'm qualified and I think I'm the greatest head coach in the world. It ends up coming, push, to, push comes to shove and they have practice two days later and I'm on the phone calling the parents on the team asking who can skate and who's interested in, in coaching this team. And a lot of the times well here, you know, I just want to be an assistant, I just want to be an assistant. And what happens is, and this literally has happened, is we'll end up with three, four parents that say they want to be an assistant, 
And we say, all right, well, you four assistants, that puck bag will be sitting at the rink for your first practice. I guess you'll show up and figure out who's going to be the head coach. Because at some point, someone needs to step up. So the process is, is anything but perfect. And when you really start boiling it down to the way and the pool of candidates that we have to select for coaches, it can be very challenging. And that's where it's important as parents and for those coaches to work with myself and Trent. Trent's more than happy to come out. His staff is more than happy to come out. I spent uh, time on the ice with coaches. Uh, uh, Ryan Kraft, um, who's our VP of development, um, is happy to come out. So if you see any concerns, questions, that's where it's a great opportunity to come to us. We'll make sure that your team gets the resources as far as coaching, development, and mentoring of your coaches. So um, on that note, I'll uh, pass it over to Coach Eigner and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. Um, forgive me, I'm reliant on my phone. No, um, the idea kind of behind the meeting, you know, especially with this age group, is not only an introduction of myself uh, to you guys, um, but, you know, a couple of things. is A, to help navigate just hockey in general, okay? Because um, I'm going into my fifth year as the head coach at Lakeville North. Um, I have two kids in the youth program. I'll have a senior on the high school team. Um, and, you know, my, my goal when I took the job five years ago was to build a great hockey program. And I knew that that would entail starting with our youngest players and, and continuing to grow not only participation but fun, um, a level of energy and passion in the program uh, up through the high school to accomplish what we've been able to accomplish over the past three or four years. Um, with that being said, uh, we have a number of things that we kind of use as a barometer for, for our success, and that's not only numbers of participants, okay, and whether they come back in the next year to participate, um, the, 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 evaluate, the evaluation process that parents are allowed, surveys that we use um, to, to gain feedback, and, and then having that ability to try and proactively continue to grow the program and make it better, if possible. Um, I, I want you guys to have a clear understanding that, that, you know, for some reason, whatever that case may be, it's, it's oftentimes understood that, you know, a, a parent, you know, can't just call a high school coach or email a high school coach. Um, and I, I, I find that to be <coughs> bad advice. You know, I want the game of hockey to be uh, enjoyable for your kids. Um, I want it to be something that the kids take a great deal of pride in. Um, one of the things I think that goes unnoticed is that I'm also a parent of six. My wife and I have six children. So not only the financial struggles of playing hockey that come, the time constraints and the commitment level that it takes to participate are all challenges that I'm very aware of. Um, and if there are things that we can do to address that and make it a more appeasing sport to participate in, we certainly want to, okay? For you guys, um, it's, it's about playing. For me, it's about looking at, in, in this order, okay, the program, the team, and the individual. And in dealing with parents, um, it's obviously oftentimes in reverse. They're most concerned with their child, i.e. the player, then the team, and the program, okay? So, in a sense, we're immediately at a juxtaposition as to what's important. I need to concern myself with the entire program and not just Jimmy, and whether he's getting enough ice time or power play time, um, or whether he's playing in the wrong position, uh, or whether his mom or dad are angry. Okay, so um, with that being said, we try to work collectively together to make sure the experience is great. And I just want to give you a little feedback on why I do this this way and why it's important for me to take every opportunity I can to meet with people um, and get in front of them because emails don't have the same impact. Trust me, they don't. Um, we've been fortunate uh, over the past three years to have a great deal of success at the high school level. And for many, that's viewed as in wins and losses or state championships or other things. And, and those things are obviously gratifying for the players and the parents that are involved and the hard work the kids put in. Um, but on those teams, okay, we had 20 National Honor Society kids. Okay? Um, we have not had a chemical violation for you parents. That means a substance abuse or any violation in four years. Okay? So largely what I think comes with 
the growth of a program and, and the pride and the work ethic and things that go into that are, are great kids and kids that you'd want your own kids to be a, a, a part of um, and be around as I do my own son and my own kids that play. And so it's not just about, you know, how can Trent figure out the number of players we need to keep winning championships, but how can we take a level of pride in the program that not only the kids but the parents buy into. And that means whether you play squirt C, squirt B, squirt A, peewee double A, you know, that's irrelevant to me because if the kids can enjoy the experience and take a lot of pride in being a part of the North hockey program, whatever level that is, and whatever team they play on, um, I think by default the program will continue to spit out positive things um, for everyone. Um, with that being said, Brad introduced himself. Ryan Kraft is sitting next to him. Um, you, know, you guys, obviously, when you sign up for hockey, you put a lot of faith in the association that, you know, we're going to do our best. And I want you to understand that um, it is a passion of ours. Okay, Ryan played professionally, played for the Gophers, played in Europe. Brad played at Harvard, okay, and, and I played professionally in college hockey. We're passionate about the game. We have children that are involved in the game. So all of the decisions we generally work through, whether it's the tryout process or how to make the game better for the kids in the association or what we can do, are largely garnered by the fact that we, A, start with a passion for the game, and we have children that play it too. And we have children that will go through the evaluation process. They may make a B team, a C team, an A team, and we know all the stress and, and feelings that come with that. So please understand that, that as coaches and as quote unquote leaders or liaisons of the hockey association, we're always trying to do the best thing we can for the kids. Okay? And sometimes that's hard for parents to understand. Okay? I've dealt with parents and coaching for 15 years and, and I'm a parent myself. And the idea that a parent is 100% objective about their son or daughter it is a rare thing I've come across. Okay? And I totally understand it. All right? And so that's why I stress that I need to always make the best decision for the program, i.e. LHA and North Hockey, then the team and the player last, okay? Because I can't just consider the feelings of one person or one parent, okay? And um, at times when you coach, I, I understand that when you have success, there's a great deal of praise, and when things go the other way, there's a great deal of criticism. And I have the good fortune uh, of being involved in the trial process at the youth level. But understand that with that comes angry parents every year. Okay, So it's not something I look forward to. But you guys look at it as we're creating teams. And I look at it as I'm creating likability groups. Like you would in math or reading or in a school. We're trying to put kids in a conducive situation for them not only to enjoy the game, but to improve. Okay? And that's worked both ways for and against us. Is when we bump that bottom kid up, sometimes there's an intimidation factor and, and the development is stunted, okay? Or if a kid ends up in a, in a lesser group where he's not fitting in, he's clearly the best player, sometimes the motivation goes away, okay? So there's no science to what we're trying to do, but we're trying to create, like I said, likability groups that are, that are good for the growth of the kids and the fun that they're going to have, okay? One number that I pay close attention to, and it wouldn't mean anything to you guys, is my squirt number. And that number gets put on the board every year at the beginning of the trials. This is how many squirts that Lakeville North has trying out. Okay? And I believe this year it was 56 for us. Okay? And to give you some perspective as to why that's important for a guy who wants to build a competitive program, that number in Edina is 256. I believe in Wyzetta it's 238. In Eden Prairie, it's 220. In Minnetonka, it's 200. Okay, so I love sports and I love the human element of people striving to achieve things. But I also know the realities that exist with that. Okay, our team has put together a schedule over the past four years that includes Edina and Wyzetta and Eden Prairie and Duluth East and Grand Rapids and all the schools that have the best hockey programs in the state. Okay. I full well know as I'm doing that, that I'm taking a number of 57 and I'm going out to compete against a number of largely 220, 230, 240, okay? And if you bring in the demographic to that, we're largely competing against communities that have the dis disposable income to train at nauseum if they want to do that, okay? So 
those are things that we're up against. And I think the, the, the only way you can combat that is by having a great deal of enthusiasm, okay? You have passion for what you're trying to do. You make sure the kids enjoy themselves. Because of that 57, trust me, along the way, I don't want it to go 56, 55, 54, okay? And for that to happen, we need to be conscious of, A, how many nights a week is my child away from home at a hockey rink? If that number becomes too many, my number is going to go down, okay? How much money does it cost to play hockey? And if we're so conscious of keeping 14 or 13 kids on teams, which spreads out the ice and the cost, the cost goes up, and I may lose number 57 or 56 or 55. And I'm extremely conscious of that, okay? And my kids, like I said, play. And I have two goaltenders in my family. So if you know anything about buying goalie equipment, it's two or three times the cost of outfitting a player. So it's not easy and I understand it. Um, but I pay attention to that number because I think it's critical um, for all of you to understand the, the lengths that I go to as the head coach of the high school team to make sure we pay attention to our youth program. And if you think that this meeting is going on around the state with high school coaches and school parents, you're wrong. Okay? I, I tend to pay more attention to it than anybody because it is super important to me. And, and if your kids at some point are, are fortunate enough to, to go through what our teams have over the past three years and, and you value life experiences, it, it's an awesome <coughs> thing for a kid to achieve. Uh, we played on hockey day this year and, and you know, these kids are fortunate enough to play on a game when they're on TV with the same guy that announces the Minnesota Wild game. Okay? And you don't do that by just having a quote unquote average program. Okay? And, so with that, I hope, I hope you can understand the time and effort that we're putting in. It will not alleviate the fact that we have this much passion, will not alleviate the fact that I will deal with between 10 and 20 angry parents after the trial process this year again. And those angry parents won't deter me from coming back and doing what I do, because I really enjoy it. And ultimately down the road, okay, they will understand that hopefully Trent is trying to do the best thing for their child, just like any other kid. Um, one thing I will make a note of, and I think that, you know, you can take this half sarcastically, but Brad was talking about the struggles we have to find coaches, okay? And in reaching out to people to find coaches, um, the number one reason uh, that coaches tell me they do not want to coach, um, can anyone tell me what that reason would be? Parents. 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 They don't want to coach because of the parents. And um, this leads me to my next point, whether it makes sense to you or not is irrelevant, but that's one of the challenges we're up against, okay? Um, and I have this talk with people all the time, you know, the chicken or the egg, what came first? You know, and I asked that of our players when I first got the job, okay? You need to go be a good team to believe you're good, okay? Or do you need to believe you're good to go beat a good team? i.e. our goal was, okay, the North program was largely considered average. Okay? And words that come with average are mediocre, below the row. Okay? And I don't think any of you as parents send your kids to school and say, go be average today, Joe. Okay? Oh, we're so thrilled. Your grades are average. Okay? And, and so I don't aspire to that for our hockey program in any way. I want it to be an unreal experience for these kids. I want our program to be looked at as great not average, okay? And for us to achieve that, um, we, we need to go the extra mile because we can look at the data, we know the realities, we know the number of kids that will sign up and we know the logistical data that says this many will continue to play through Bantams and this many and this many and this many, okay? And we're up against that and that's not going to change, okay? Um, by no means do I say, oh, poor Lakeville North, okay? But the numbers are the numbers, and, and, and so we have to be extra attentive to the details, like I said, to make it fun for the kids, to keep our parents in line, and to keep the experience good for everyone. Um, in discussing uh, um, that, that part about coaches and why they don't have a desire to coach, okay, I fully understand, and, and I'm not going to share with you my political views because they're irrelevant, but that society as a whole has moved to a more liberal view of things, okay? Um, I didn't get participation medals when I played sports, okay? 
the, the, the team that won the championship or the golfer that got the best score got the trophy. Okay? And that has changed dramatically. And I, like I said, I have six kids. And when they go sign up for something, they get a trophy. Okay? And what that leads to is largely sometimes kids that feel entitled because they, they, that trophy to them means success. Okay? And as they grow through sports, you'll find that the idea behind sports or competing in anything is just that. You compete, which gives you the opportunity to win or lose, succeed or fail. And how that is handled in any home is up to you, okay? But I would think that those are what we value as life experiences to teach your children, okay? Study hard, get an A. Don't study, get a C. Which one do you want to do, okay? Do good in the job interview, get the job. Don't prepare, don't get the job, okay? That will not change just because, you know, they move on from sports or you know, whether they play on a B or C team, okay? So there's a, there's a balance that we're trying to find as adults in valuing competition, wins and losses, having fun, and creating a positive environment for kids, okay? Now my opinion that I, that I, that I don't believe participation trophies are of value, Okay? Because once you get a room full of invaluable trophies that you didn't have to work for, they were just given to you, they become worthless. They mean nothing to you, okay? Versus going out and actually achieving something. So, you know, we can have that discussion until we're blue in the face, but I'm just telling you that's the reality of what we're dealing with, okay? And so, um, I'm not here to tell you which way to go about that as a family. I will tell you that at the high school level, okay? Faith, family, and education in any order should probably come before hockey, okay? And you can dissect those the way you want. You can throw one out. Maybe you don't like your mom. There goes family. But um, those three things, in at least at the high school level, okay, come before hockey, okay? But after that, my hope is that for our players, hockey is a priority, okay? Meaning the things they do in their daily lives will keep hockey that priority. Their social calendar will be adjusted so that hockey's a priority. Things they, the decisions they make away from the rink, okay, and in social settings will make hockey a priority. And, and, and with that, our hope is that we can not only develop successful kids, but I want to say that every kid that's played for us in the past four years has gone on to college of some kind. Not all not played, but they've gone on to further their education. Okay? And I have found that in coaching kids that you know a lot of my better students are generally more committed in anything they do. Okay? Meaning the ones that are on the honor roll, they've learned to balance their schedule. They've learned to put down the cell phone. They've learned to make sacrifices to carry good grades and play on a varsity hockey team or a varsity baseball team. And, and those are things that as we go through and try to better our association, things that, that I've looked at in the tryout and the evaluation process, okay? And that's the next thing I'll touch on, is that my role in the Hockey Association, I guess, is A, to, to, to fill a leadership role. Um, secondly, I'm actually in charge of the tryout process for the North Side. And when I say in charge of the tryout process, technically I don't put together the format, and I don't put together the scoring format, or those things, okay? What I do is I, bring in outside evaluators, guys that I have faith in that have played the game at a high level, mostly college and pro guys that have coached, but they have no ties to Lakeville, okay? They go and evaluate, all right? And as I go through the surveys every year from parents, trust me, there's one thing in sports of any kind that will never be perfect, is the evaluation process, i.e. the tryouts, okay? Because for some parents, six times on the ice is too many. For some, it's not nearly enough. When you value skills, that's ludicrous. When you value their play in a scrimmage, that's ludicrous, okay? So I know we'll never make it perfect for everyone, and trust me, I don't lose sleep over trying to, okay? I do the best I can with the process and the format that we have to make it fair, okay? But I will tell you this, that I have found over the years, and, and I've spent a lot of time on the ice with Lakeville kids, I really enjoy it. So by the time they get to the high school level, even by the time they get to Paris, I can basically tell you, 
you know, which kids kind of fit where and what some of their tendencies are. Meaning who's got a temper, who's very competitive, who's not, who really kind of likes to watch butterflies and who doesn't. And those aren't good nor bad, but those are realities. And I think that one of the things that we need to do, we're attempting to do um, within the trial process is kind of use some historical data, okay, to see if we can fit kids in better spots. Meaning we've put kids that have largely evaluated very well, right? Okay, you have to remember, okay, there's five sets of eyes. They have, they don't have kids in Lakeville, right? So they, they, they sit down with a clipboard and out come these penny numbers and that's all they are to them is numbers, okay? So let's just say 57 has a great week, okay, and he does really well, but he had struggles last year with coachability and his attitude and didn't really show up all the time. Is that kid the best kid to, to, to play on one of our top teams? Okay, where it's largely going to be very competitive across the communities we play. I'm not here to say yes or no, but history says no. Okay? Um, so those are things that, you know, in life that I know you guys talk about as parents. Okay? Character and work ethic and discipline. They're, they're, they have nothing to do with hockey. They're things you teach children about as you raise them, okay? But sometimes for good or for bad, based on surveys, we go back to a scoring format that throws out all those wonderful characteristics that you'd want in a kid. And it puts a number of scores down on a sheet, okay? Even though there's been situations over the past five years that I know are going to go bad. I know that that kid's going to be exactly what he ends up being on a team and it goes bad, right? It's not my place because he scored well and he made his, you know, he, he, there he goes, right? But in the back of my mind as a parent and a kid who's coached him over four summers, I go, it's going to go bad. And nine out of ten times it does go bad. So the reason I share with you that is to help you understand how difficult the process is, that it's always going to be imperfect, but that we are going to continue on my belief that it's great for kids to compete. You can learn from success and failure. We are always going to encourage our coaches to schedule a, pro, uh, uh, a game schedule that is reflective of our high school program. Okay? Meaning, we will play Edina, NYZ, and Minnetonka, and Grand Rapids, and Moorhead. Okay? Those are the teams that we play. So, if my youth program kids don't compete at that level all the way up, they're in for a rude awakening when they get to the high school level, and that's not what I want for our program. Okay? I would rather kids understand early on how hard they need to work to compete against the best teams than have no chance when they get to be 15, 16 years old because they've never experienced it. Um, before I'm done, please know that okay, I put my email up there for a reason. Um, when I say I would like to help and we would like to help you navigate the process of hockey, that's any question, okay? That's, that's anything, okay? It's always a shame to me when, when <coughs> parents come to me and they say, I, don't, I didn't know about the summer program, or I didn't know about spring skating, or I didn't know about this, or I didn't know about that. But they never asked, okay? So that's why it's up there. And I do the best, you know, I run clinics in the spring, the summer, and the fall. Okay? And to give you a little background on being a high school coach, they pay you $4,900 to coach. Okay? It roughly breaks down to about 50 cents an hour by the time you're done. Okay? But they do give you the opportunity to work within your association. And I do run camps and clinics. Okay? That's how I make a living to feed my, my six kids. Okay? But what I've found over the years is that it's tough to communicate with everyone. And I wish I could. I wish I had that commercial with the hit button or whatever it is. You know, hit the button and you can communicate to everyone. Because I want kids to have opportunities. I want to be fair to parents. I want parents who aren't traditional hockey families to understand what it takes for their kid to succeed in hockey um, and give them those opportunities. So that's all there. To the best of my knowledge, most of my clinic information, like the summer stuff, goes up on the LHA website. You can find it there. But if you have no idea and you'd like to be a part of it, or you're afraid to ask the question that Johnny has golf and Johnny has baseball, can we do two days a week and would you prorate it? I don't know if you don't ask, but I'm certainly inclined to do it because I know my kids play golf and ride horses and do everything else and, and you know, there's not a perfect fit for everyone. But those things are important because um, 
I know we were, we, I'm confident that we, we run great programs, okay? And one thing I found that on a parent's list of to-dos, convenience is a big one. And the idea that they're able to train here at Ames Arena versus Bloomington Ice Garden or Ridgefield or, or Blaine is a great thing. I know um, based on Crafty's years of being a personal instructor and a skating instructor that we have great curriculum. And I know that the cost is very fair in comparison to what's out there. So um, just know that's available to you. And, and, and again, feel free to ask and understand that there are time commitments that, that keep people from doing everything. Um, like I said, the most important thing, guys, is to help you navigate the process. Make sure the kids have fun. And I want you to get a clear understanding of the people that you know, myself in particular, that are quote unquote in charge of the direction of the program. Uh, I hope you have faith that, that we're trying to do our best for the kids. Um, and I hope you also understand that, you know, in fairness to the kids and the parents, um, it doesn't do me any good to pretend that it's not competitive. You know, I'd rather share with kids what it takes to get there um, and allow those kids that are competitive to, to get there. And, and know that there's a place at the A, B, or C level for every kid to have fun playing hockey and later. Um, so we will do our best. If there's one thing that, that we have discussed that was a concern um, as well, and just I want you guys to leave here knowing that it has been discussed, is the amount of time that kids are spending at the rink and whether our practice to game ratios fall in line with what's best for kids. Meaning if we're playing a game for every time we practice, that's not that's not right. Okay. You, you can't expect kids to learn a game properly if they don't have fundamentals. Um, and if you're you're not sacrificing game time to give the kids the fundamentals to improve, then that's backwards and, and we're doing the wrong thing. So we're paying close attention to that. Um, as an association, especially on the north side this year. Um, with that, any questions, comments, concerns, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them. Um, if I can, <coughs> under my time limits, feel free to ask. No? Well, with that, guys, thank you again uh, for taking the time to come. Um, I know everyone's busy as the kids in all their different soccer, baseball uniforms. So I appreciate you taking the time to come. Please call or email if you do have questions. We'd be more than happy to sit down with you and answer them and uh, help you through the process, as would Brad or Ryan. Uh, if you want to make note of what this being posted on the website so they can share that with you. Ah, uh, yeah, if possible, guys, I'm sure you have any other friends that weren't able to make it tonight. Um, the reason we're recording it okay, is so that if, uh, if you want to share with someone that it is being recorded, it will be loaded up on the website. I'm the last guy to ask about IT stuff, but put it this way. Or put it on there. Where will it be? Oh, it'll be on lakevillehockey.org. We'll okay. just send it in an email, but it'll also be posted all three sessions, and YouTube is where we're going to pull it from. So. Okay. Alright, thanks guys. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>